Great. Thank you very much, Wendy. Hi, everybody. And again, thank you for joining us on this webinar. The future. Who wouldn't like to have the ability to predict the future, particularly in these times that are so unsettling for us? Yeah, if we knew what the future held, we could make decisions today that would have huge positive impacts, not only on our lives, but on the lives of individuals around the world. So predicting the future is something that I think probably everyone would love to be able to do. Now, when we talk about predicting, most of the time our thoughts head to the weather because I'd like to know a prediction of what the forecast is gonna be for this weekend so that I can make my plans or cancel them, bring an umbrella with me, whatever the case may be. But if you pause and think about it for a moment, when we talk about the weather, we're not just talking about the future forecast on this weekend, but weather actually involves, we could say, three buckets of data. First of all, there's the weather that has happened in the past. We probably would like to know perhaps what the record high was for this day, what the record low was, what the average is. Um, yeah, and all of this information about records and averages and such like come from that bucket of past data where we've been able to gather over a hundred years worth of information about highs and lows so we can create accurate averages. So the weather is not just about looking to the future. It's also looking back to the past as well. And the weather is about looking at the present. That's our second bucket. You know, I'd like to know what the temperature is outside right now. Because when I go outside, do I need to take a jacket? Do I need to take an umbrella? What, what, what do I need to carry with me? So the weather is not just what happened in the past. It's what's happening right now. And of course, with the weather, we are very interested in the future. As we said, what's going to be happening this weekend? Will I be able to keep my plans, cancel them, take an umbrella, whatever the case may be? So when we think about weather, it's not just forecasting what happens, we hope, but it's looking back to what has happened. It's also looking at the present. What's the temperature right now? And it's also then, of course, forecasting the future as well. So we've got these three distinct buckets of data, past data, present data, and future data. Now, if you've ever thought about how in the world do they predict the, the weather, most weather forecasting, that is looking to the, the future, is done by modeling. Most weather forecasts use traditional observations. You know, what's the atmospheric pressure? What's the temperature? What's the wind speed? What's the wind direction? What's the humidity? Et cetera, et cetera. And all of these sensors are located in various places on automatic weather stations, boys out in the water, even trained observers as well. So most weather forecasting, looking to the future, is done through these predictive models that were looking at, generally speaking, what's going on to, in terms of weather, to our west, since most weather patterns go from west to east. If I know what's happening right now, 200 miles to the west of me, then I can pretty well predict what's going to be happening in my area very soon. We can look at these models and make fairly good predictions. But weather forecasting is changing. It's changing in that no longer do we look just at models, sensors that gather data, but rather when it comes to, for instance, precipitation forecasts, 
like exactly when the rain will arrive. We're using current and past radar data to do predicting of future radar data. And algorithms are these computer image predictions that with little actual weather modeling as often it is done today. So we're moving now into an era where we're leaving the models behind and we're using algorithms. Um, and these algorithms do an excellent job of predicting the arrival of almost any precipitation that's along a weather front. But uh, these do a really poor job of predicting convective weather, like rain clouds that might boil up in one spot and bodies of water, and if we've got a steep topography, it can also throw off predictive algorithms. Now, this conversation that we're having this morning is not all about the weather, but I think it illustrates the fact that when we talk about weather, we're interested in past data, present data, as well as future data. But the weather is not the only entity which does predictions for us, of course. Recently, I was on Amazon looking for a new office chair. And office chairs are sometimes kind of hard to find today because so many people are working from home and we need new chairs. Um, and as I looked at office chairs, of course, this popped up that said, hey, you might also like. Well, how did Amazon know that I might also like? Well, the answer, of course, is it looked at what I had been observing, that past data, what I currently was observing, so it could make those predictions. Again, we keep talking about these buckets of past, present, and future data. And you actually can go in and you can adjust the data that Amazon gathers for you and makes those predictions. But all this is to say, it's all about the numbers, isn't it? Today, it's the numbers that are in these buckets of past, present, and future. And if we wanted to expand this out just a little bit, we might even do it in the realm of sports as well. Consider how much sports has changed dramatically just over the last decade because we've had these buckets of past, present, and we can use them for future data. Consider basketball. You know, basketball essentially has been unchanged for over 100 years. But then suddenly, it's like a light bulb went on that the NBA suddenly realized, you know what? Three-pointers are worth 50% more than two-pointers. So why are we spending all this time trying to make layups and short jump shots when instead we should be focusing on three-pointers? And the average number of three-point attempts per game has increased every year over the last decade. If you Hi there. I hope you enjoyed that last clip. My name is Michael Maloudis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast, while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year. But if you use the coupon code LEARN to EARN, you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over 1,000 hours of on-demand career development, covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app, as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants, all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of the great IT professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.